Welcome! Today we are going to see how to automate the SSH connection. For that, you see the, the context. I'm here surrounded by servers, or at least their picture. And when you are an admin, you have to manage different servers. What you want to do is to ease your connection to those servers. So if you are using SSH, it's a good thing to automate the login process. Like that, you avoid the, the password phase rekeying. The second thing, it's also really interesting to, to have this if you have to automate some processes. So for this, I've prepared uh, settings in which I can show you how to prepare and how to configure for that. So what I have, I will have a server and uh, I have a PC. All what I want to do, it's an automatic SSH connection from the PC to the server. To demonstrate this, I'm going to work here in the environment. I have a Windows 10 host, which will be used just as the, the host here. And as you can see, I have a Debian machine. The Debian machine will be simulating the laptop from which I want to connect to a server, which is the Ubuntu server we see here up. The IP addresses I have on this network are 10.0.2.0. So the server will be with 10.0.2.4. So before we can do that, we will have an exchange of public keys. That's how it works. So we need first to generate those keys. I have here now an environment. I'm logged into the Debian machine, which is here, which is called Clone1Deb9 and 64 for 64 bit. So what I'm going to do is to do an SSH connection. So the syntax of the SSH connection, SSH Chris at 4 as you see, it requires a password. So to avoid that phase and to automate the logging, I will need to have an exchange between a public key, which will encrypt the challenge that will be decoded by my private key. So first of all, what I have to do is to generate my keys. For this, you need to see whether you already have a .ssh folder. In my case, I have one. If you don't have an SSH folder, make dir.ssh into your home directory. This will do it. Once you've created that SSH folder, make sure and pay attention, sometimes it's the situation, of the permissions that you have on that file. Here, in my case, if I select here my .ssh, you see from the permissions here that it's only the owner and I have to be the owner of this folder. This, when I had the first of those sessions, one was one reason of some of the mistakes I, uh, I have made. So once I've done that, I will go into .ssh to generate the keys. Since my keys for the DMOs are already prepared, I will do it now in a folder, in another folder. So I'm going to make a folder called .ssh training. So it already exists, so I will change to that folder. Once I'm there, I'm going to generate the keys there. So the keys can be generated anywhere. What is important is that finally they are in your home directory .ssh subdirectory. To generate your keys, you are going to launch the command ssh keygen and then you can have different options of the type of encryption that you want. I'm using here RSA, so we'll launch this. And you see that it's going to generate a private pair 
which is a part which is public and private. And it's asking me where do you want to save those keys. So I'm going to change this because I have already my keys. So I want it to be saved into Chris slash dot SSH training slash ID underscore RSA. You can have a passphrase to protect your keys. For this, you could enter it now, but you can also do it without. It's simpler when you do your first installation. So I leave it empty. So you leave it uh, as it is. And it has now generated something random. So once I have this, I will look what it created for me in the file. So you see that I have two files that I can, of course, look into. And it's a bunch of encrypted characters. So the first key, which is ID RSA, this is really the one you need to secure. It's the one that is really private. It's your private key. The second one is the same name, .pub public so that one is the one that we are going to place on the server like that the server is going to be able to encrypt the, the authentication challenge he is going to to send us so now what you need to do is to transfer those file into dot ssh um, subdirectory before that you will see here the permissions on those files. You see that ID RSA, which is your private key, has only the right to be read and written by the owner. No group permission, no world permissions. This is again really something important. Sometimes when you have issues, look at the permissions. This might be the cause. The second key is that time defined with read write for the owner and read permissions for the group and for the world that's how on the server the server will be able to use that key so in order to move it if you were not already in your folder dot ssh if you are in your folder dot ssh you don't have to do anything it's fine like that so if you need to move you can move them move id that time star to dot ssh your home directory uh, dot ssh i'm not going to execute this because for me it's already done but you have to to do it if you don't have those keys so we are going now to to see what's happening into uh, dot ssh you see there you have the the two files that i'm going to to use in order now to be able to have the public key that is used by the server i will need from my machine where I'm working, where I will be the client, I will need to transfer the public key into my account on the server .ssh subdirectory. So now I'm into my .ssh account on the Debian machine, which is the client, and I will connect to the Ubuntu one in order to see if this folder .ssh exists on the remote server. So for this, I SSH remotely. So my account is chris at 10.0.2.4, which is the Ubuntu server. I need to authenticate for the moment. Okay, I'm there, I'm authenticated. Let's see what they are as directories. On this system, there is already a .ssh subdirectory. So what I want to do, it's if it wasn't the case, again, you create the .ssh subdirectory. 
which I won't do since it exists. So now let's look what is into the .ssh subdirectory. And you see that on the remote servers, there are no keys at the moment. I will now have to transfer the keys. So how can I do that? So I exit from my account here and I'm there into the .ssh uh, subdirectory. What I want to do is to transfer this key. So I just copy the name and I'm going to use SFTP, which is an FTP through SSH. Again, at the destination of the account Chris, at that Ubuntu machine with address 2.4. Again, it's still asking for my identification. So I'm there and there I can say change directory and go to SSH. Okay. And I can do a put. It has been transferred from my Debian server to the Ubuntu server. I transferred my public key. Do not transfer the private key. So once this is done, the key is transferred and I will again log into the remote server. We still have one thing to do. So now what I have to do is to first check whether the file is really there. IDRSA.pub is there. And now what I have to do is to put this into a file called authorized keys. The way I'm doing it here with the cat redirected into authorized keys is really interesting because you could have also several people with their own keys accessing into one account remotely. And by multiplying this with different keys, you could give the access to other accounts or other users also to that same account. And by using the command where you add at the end the new key, you immediately give the right to the right person. So this said, we, we can now look what is into the file called authorized keys. And we have the key which is in there. So I will now log out from this server. I will clear all that, that. And I will exit from the Ubuntu server and I will launch again my command of SSH directly from the Debian server to the Ubuntu server. And we see that we have been automatically logged into the remote server. You see, we are here on the Ubuntu machine. So with that, we have now the possibility to automatically remote log into a system. So I just repeat this. And we are logged into the, the system. So this is what I wanted to, to show you. Uh, an easy installation. It's not always so easy. Pay attention to the rights. Do the right steps, how they have to be done. And I think it should work. Anyway, um, if you have questions, feel free to, to ask. And if you have suggestions, you can also uh, put comments under this video. Anyway, thank you for your time. Hope to see you soon again. Have a good time. Bye-bye. See you.